Morgan from The Walking Dead or Fear the Walking Dead using a simple walking stick for self-defense. This is the Japanese Joe. It's 54 inches. It's also just a long piece of wood. You can pick up any walking stick, any hiking stick, and immediately defend yourself with simple thrusting motions, slashing strikes, pushing strikes, shoving, bring it down over the top, up under the groin, right through the middle of their body. It's very effective for self-defense. You can also strike the head, and with a hickory self-defense stick like this, this is a walking stick that I use for self-defense, you can smash the brains for self-defense. Knock them out, then you're safe. No matter what, hello Will, hello everybody, it's good to see you. No matter what, this is always going to be longer than a knife. And I told myself I wouldn't whip this out. This is the one, that, this is my everyday carry, just in case. I know sometimes you guys ask what's in my everyday carry. I carry things in the car for self-defense. Also just for basic security to, um, if you're in a car accident, you need to get the seatbelt off fast. Something like this, which is razor sharp. But this is no joke. As sharp as this is, I'd rather cut this than cut flesh, right? And this gives me reach, reach advantage. Look how long that is. So move back just so you can see. If he's got one of these and I've got one of these, I've got the advantage of reach. I have the K-bar, I have two K-bars. One is in my get home bag. The other one is in my uh, bug out bag. So I have one in the, in the car in case I'm out somewhere and I get stuck. And I have my Marine Corps K-Bar, the very first one I ever had, with all the nicks and scratches, I sharpened it with a stone for all those years. That's the one I carry with me in the car in case the grid goes down, I can't get gas, gotta get to the house, gotta get to the school, gotta save the kids, take care of the family. I've got one there, and I've got one at the house in case I gotta grab it and go, and we gotta forage in the forest and hunt and eat, you know, rip it open and skin it, cook it on a spit. I've got the other K-Bar in there, along with machete and hatchet and all the other good stuff. Um, but that's the answer to that. Brandon has a school trip to Bush Gardens. That means you're coming down this way, Brandon. It's exciting to hear that. I hope you enjoy that. That's a beautiful place. All right, so we're talking about self-defense. It's fighting like Morgan from The Walking Dead. This is the perfect self-defense walking tool for SHTF, when stuff hits the fan. Start with your hand in the middle. You've got to properly prepare when you train with your walking stick for self-defense so you don't have any injuries. You're just gonna go side to side, and what this is gonna do is it's gonna fire all those muscles in your hand, your wrist, your elbow, all the way into your shoulder, building strength, power, but it's also getting blood in there. It's gonna warm it up properly, lubricate the joints to stay safe from injury so you don't get hurt during your workout. Do this for 30 seconds while you're also building power. You want time under tension. The faster you go, the heavier your staff, or the heavier your walking stick, the stronger you're gonna get. But start slowly at the beginning, work yourself up. Just like Morgan from The Walking Dead, he had to learn the hard way. We're all a little hard-headed when it comes to some things, right? You go slowly when you learn, and before you know it, you get really good really fast. Good afternoon, Hank, it's good to see you. After you do this for 30 seconds, I want you to start to go from one hand out to the other hand. This is just to get comfortable moving your walking stick for self-defense from side to side. Like you, I woke up yesterday, I think it was the night before I went to sleep, starting to hear about the new COVID variant. And, uh, and they didn't name it yet. They skipped a couple letters. One of, the, one of the Greek letters they skipped was XI, which is, it's funny, they should have named that in honor. But of course they wouldn't, G, you know, she or C or however you want to say that. So, so Omicron, so now we got the Omicron coming. And they say it's got all kinds of crazy mutations. Look like it. There's no way it could have happened just on its own. But whether it did or not, it doesn't matter, right? Because we're talking about self-defense. We're talking about being prepared for any situation. And the cool thing about The Walking Dead, movies like that, TV shows like that, zombies are just a metaphor for the unprepared masses. That's not you. That's not me. We prepare ourselves so that if stuff does hit the fan and all I have is a walking stick, I can create distance, I can thrust, I can strike to the head, bring that through, bring it down on top, straight through the middle, and immediately defend myself against a bigger opponent, multiple attackers, somebody with a weapon, any kind of weapon, doesn't matter, except that weapon, obviously. This isn't gonna do that anything for that. But a bladed weapon, a knife, a skateboard. I know we talk about skateboards a lot on this channel. 
just because I've seen so many uh, articles and, and I've been told now how it's used effectively for a self-defense tool. So maybe we'll grab one of those and we'll start to practice with that. We can show you how to use a skateboard. If nothing else, if all else fans or fails or you happen to be a skateboarder, that's one way that you transport yourself. That is a good self-defense tool. But this is the self-defense tool that Morgan uses in The Walking Dead and Fear the Walking Dead with the red eyes now. And he's just basically having a long piece of wood. The Japanese Joe is the staff that is used in Aikido. And in The Walking Dead TV show or the series, the story kind of goes a little bit that Morgan finds himself out in the middle of nowhere. He runs into a self-sufficient, self-sustaining, smart guy who is very zen-like and peaceful-like, but he's also wicked strong. He's able to defend himself with Aikido with his hands and also with his Aikido staff, his Aikido bow. It's not really a bow, it's a Joe. The Joe is a medium-sized staff, and it's about 54 inches. All the links are below. If you want to look at that first link, you can see everything about how to get your own self-defense staff. Hello, Matthew. It's good to see you. But I want to, I give you the basic warm up. I want to show you the first turning motion. And then today I want to talk about sidestepping a little bit, if that works for you, in sidestepping in order to strike. And this is for Studer. Studer always asks me, can we go a little bit more advanced, show a few extra techniques? So, Studer, when you see this, this one's for you. The first thing I want you to do is have it in the back hand. And from the back hand, I want you to think about throwing a punch. And as you throw a punch, turn your thumb down. And see what happens when I throw a punch and I turn my thumb down, the long end of the staff comes forward and right into the side of his face or his head or his arm or any part of his body that I need to strike for self-defense. So this is the very first one that I want you to use. Push and turn your thumb down. Now, I want you to generate more power. I want you to create stopping power, enough power that whether you're fighting zombies or the undead, like in The Walking Dead, right? Or The Walking Dead, the walkers, whatever you want to call them. Or you, that's a metaphor for a bunch of desperate people who refuse to prepare because they didn't want to accept the reality or whatever. And you have an abundant mindset like I do, and you're an abundant preparer, an abundant prepper like I am. And you say, you know what? I'm going to prepare. I'm going to get some batteries. I'm going to get a light source. Uh, I'm going to have some, some extra matches and lighters and a flint. And I'm going to teach myself how to use sticks to start a fire. I taught myself how to do that. You should teach yourself how to do that. Teach your kids how to do that. But you've done that, right? But the rest of the sheep, the sheeple haven't done anything. They don't have a plan. Remember this saying, this, remember this for always, right? The sheeple have no plan. So don't be one of the sheeple. Have a plan. So you created a plan, but everyone around you didn't. And somehow you made a mistake and you let them all know that you had a little bit of extra stuff. And so they're coming for it, right? So that's, the whole, that's what the whole of The Walking Dead is all about, this idea. Like I said, it's a metaphor for the unprepared. There's a small group of prepared. There's Morgan and his uh, Joe staff, his Aikido Joe. And then there's all the zombies coming around. And the only way to take care of them is to go for that headshot. So we're going to start with that headshot. But I want you to generate more power by now turning your shoulders and hips. If I just punch and turn down, that's a nice, fast, hard strike, especially with this quantum protector self-defense Joe made out of hickory. That's a hard strike. However, when you turn your shoulders and hips, the same time you do that strike, it's coming in a lot faster and it's hitting so much harder. Then if you want to, um, Brandon asking can you spin it with a hand? Yes, I'm gonna show you. Yeah, Steve said the ferro rod stick is the first fire stick you should get. Absolutely, amazing product. Turning, coming this way, and then back. This is the spin that you would use to practice repetition for these strikes. And you can strike from here, strike it, bring it here. You can also strike bringing it back to the other side. Both of those are legitimate strikes. Now, with the long staff, the, the Joe or the bow, the long martial arts staff, where you'll see all of the fancy spins and all of the cool moves and over the head and behind the back, and then like Ray Park in the Star Wars movie playing, uh, what's his name, the guy with the red skin and the horns? Darth, Darth Maul, just like Darth Maul. That's all for show. You're not gonna spin with the long staff for self-defense. You're gonna stand your ground, you're gonna thrust, you're gonna strike and strike. But with the shorter staff, 
there is that spinning motion, this one spin where you punch, turn your thumb to the ground, turn your shoulders and hips, and then if you move in, you're gonna hit so much harder when you just step forward a little bit. Darth Maul, thank you. Also, here's the offset. This is for Studer. Studer is one of the online members. I also get a lot of requests for, let me bring this down a little bit, I want you to see my feet, for, uh, on Patreon. So for those of you on Patreon or those of you who are paying members here, I really appreciate it. I'm trying to reach a certain number by the end of this year to justify continuing. I'm gonna do it no matter what. We're gonna work out like this forever, right? But I need to, it, it gives me a little bit more when I talk to other people. Justification is step one, two. Here's what you never, never do. Don't cross your feet. You cross your feet and you get hit, you go to the ground, and then they're gonna uh, stomp your foot into the ground. You stomp your head with their boot, right? You're gonna step right, left, left, right. Anytime you go that way, one, two, there's the turn. Now the attack is coming, it's coming straight to you, right? Here comes the walker. He's coming in, he's trying to smash you, or the bad guy trying to stab, grab, punch. They're coming in, you're gonna step one, two, they're going by this way, and you're gonna hit them at the same time. It's as simple as that. So we can bring the camera back up now that you saw the feet. Other thing I love about practicing with the self-defense walking stick is that it makes me sweat and you're gonna get a good workout when you do this. So from here, the center, the attack coming on your center line, you step right, left, because my right foot's back, as you're turning, and this is gonna cross your body and that's gonna give you a lot of power. So I step to the side, I let them come by and I hit them on the way by. Now, if I were having it on the other side and I want to come back, it's the same thing. But now that I'm going to my left and my left foot's forward, I step left, right. So as I go to the left, I turn. As I go to the right, turn, left, turn. You want a great workout? Step to the side, step to the side. I do want to show you my feet one more time to see that because this is very important that you never, ever, never cross your feet. So you're stepping over, stepping back. Left foot's in front of the right, left foot's still in front of the right. Don't make the mistake of coming up square. You wanna have this here and step over and step back and step over and step back. Step here, step back. One, two. Now go slowly at first. And because it's gonna, when you watch me do it, you're like, oh, that's simple, that's easy. And then you start to do it and you're like, what, <laughs> why is it not working? And I only say, I'm not saying that's gonna happen to you, that happens to so many people that I work with and it's because I've done it for, uh, I did the math the other day, I'm 50, I started at nine, been messing with the staff since before then. And one of the reasons I wanted to get into martial arts, right? If yours doesn't look like mine from the start, it will, just don't quit but it, it will look that good if you never quit. But give yourself some grace, give, be patient with yourself. You'll look like Morgan from The Walking Dead. You'll fight like Morgan from The Walking Dead. You'll be able to train and defend yourself with a self defense walking stick for SHTF when Omicron comes. Omicron, what a name, right? Sounds like a uh, transformer. Who, you know, who, probably, there probably is, I'm sure there's a, uh, an Omicron transformer, it's gotta be, right? Now, the second thing I want you to do is point your thumb when it's in the front hand. When you point your thumb, it puts it in the center line of the threat. From here, you're walking down the street, here comes the walker, you're like Morgan from The Walking Dead, you point your thumb, you're ready to go. And again, like I said, the, the zombies, those are metaphors for the unprepared. Those are the sheeple who are, they've got the rumbling in the belly, the fear, because they did nothing. They saw the same thing coming that you did, and you prepared, and they didn't. They just assumed, well, someone's going to take care of me. Someone, someone's going to take care of me, right? But guess what? You're training to be your own first responder. You're not waiting. And so you get behind your staff and you say, back up, you're too close. You point the thumb and then you thrust. There are two things I want you to do on the thrust. One is extend the reach of your thrust by sliding through the hand, almost like a pull cue, right? Smashing this way, like a pull cue. Two is as it's sliding, extend your arms to the front of and away from your body. This is going to lock this arm. See how my front arm is locked? And so when you hit something heavy, your body can move back, 
But if you don't do that, if you hit here, then they're going to collapse, they're going to come in, and they're going to have you, right? And the question is, what happens if he grabs the end of my staff? You're going to step to the side, right, left, and turn. So you're going to practice here, point, thrust, right, left, turn. See what my hands are doing? I'm exaggerating it so you can see. Think about churning, churning butter or mixing paint. I grew up painting apartment complex, painting houses. And when you didn't have a, um, a, an automatic gun to stir the paint, you had to do it by hand. You took a big, big stick, find a big stick, and you just stir it like this. It's the same motion, your hands are a little bit different. Palm up, palm down. So you're gonna thrust, right, left, turn. Let me show you the feet one more time. In case you're joining us later, you can go back and watch this whole thing. I'll show, I show the feet a bunch. It's just one, two. You can even come off the line more to an angle. Just don't square your feet up under your body. You're pointing in this direction. I was here, now I'm here. I thrust here, step and turn. Thrust here. Remember, anytime you move your body, you're generating more power if he grabs the staff by the end. Hello, Richard, it's nice to see you. And I wanna say a special thank you. Thanksgiving was a couple days ago, I know I said thank you. I posted a little video that we did with Facebook years ago. Facebook, the actual company came and paid us to do a commercial for their, their Facebook groups. It was pretty cool. We were one of five groups selected out of thousands, tens of thousands. And then their, um, their Cambridge Analytica scandal hit and it never got to be used as, like it was supposed to. So we use it every once in a while. So from here, you thrust, but they grab the end of your staff, right? They're grabbing it like this. They're trying to rip it out of your hands so they can beat you with it. Now the walkers don't do that, but the sheeple might, right? Remember, you're never gonna be a sheeple. You're not one of the sheep. You're gonna have a plan. The sheep will have no plan. So what you do is after you struck them with it and they grab it out of whatever, they're still not having a firm grip. They're getting ready to rip it out of your hand though. You're gonna step, turn and smash. And what do you smash? Ideally the top of his head. So his hands are gonna go like this, bam. And then he's either gonna hit himself in his own hand or the top of his head. But I wanted to say thank you to all of you who um, have actually joined here as a member. There's a little button below that you can join. The more online members I have, the less I have to move the school. I haven't found a space. I'm looking desperately. Um, I told the landlord I can't leave by the end of the month, which is in a couple days. So I'm going to try to push into December, but I have to have a space. We've got to keep training together. And so when you guys support me here, that really helps. So I point the thumb, I thrust, I step and smash. You can thrust and step off to the other side and do the same motion. If one way is stronger than the other way, so you should play around with both. You should be able to do both. So from here, thrust, step to the side and smash. Thrust, step to the other side and smash. This is a good exercise for brain elasticity to keep you young in your brain. And the reason it's such a great exercise, I'm gonna adjust the camera. I want you to see more of the feet more of the lower part of the body. The reason it's so good is that I'm stepping right, left when I go to the right, and I'm stepping left, right when I go to the left. And again, when you first start that, when you're watching it, you're like, that's so simple. I can do that. And then you start to go faster, and then your feet start to stutter and hesitate. You start crossing them over. You start walking like that. And then that really happens because I, I teach this in person all the time. Every single week, I'm training practical self-defense. It's my new passion, right? It's been my passion for 20, 30 years. But since I moved down here, since COVID started, since Omicron came around, the Delta came, and I'm like, oh, I knew it. I knew they were going to have another one. And then now it's the Omicron. What's after the Omicron? Five better cap of new. I don't know. Something's coming. They skipped the new. They skipped the G. They're going to who knows what next. They should just name it ha ha, we got you, ha ha. Personal opinion. Anyway, from here, you can't do anything about it except prepare for your own safety, your own abundance. You can still live abundantly when the world seems to be fighting for scarcity. 
There's not scarcity. There's always abundance. You just have to train your mind to see it. There's so much beauty. From here, just side to side. So that's the second thing. The third thing I want you to practice is from here in the backhand, bring it back up this way. So the first one you did, I had you turn and smash. And then I had you step off to the side and smash. Studer, that was for you. So you step off, bam, bring it through here. Step back, bring it through here. And for Justin, Justin, if you're training with us again today, when you see this one, Justin's up in Canada or Ohio. Yeah, who's in Canada, who's training with us. You need a little level up. This will be a little bit harder for you. This is what I want you to do. Constantly challenge yourself to grow. You don't grow within your comfort zone. Get out of your comfort zone to grow. But move off the line, move off the line. Second one, get behind it, thrust. Step off the side, thrust, and step back. Then switch the feet. Thrust, step off the side, thrust, step back. Maybe it's easy to go right, left, left, right on one side, but then you switch the feet and you're challenged again. Boom, your brain, your brain starts to grow again. Your elasticity comes back. Your youthfulness returns. This is the greatest way to stay young, and stay relevant, and stay um, strong and healthy for your family. Get in the back hand. You're going to bring this to your ear. Here. From here, I'm going to thrust. I'm going to sidestep. Slide the hand. Bam! This is just that chopping down a tree. Right? Just like chopping down a tree. It's in the back hand. I bring it to the other hand so I have more power. And I'm going to thrust to stop his forward attack. Just like a bayonet attack. Right? From here, then I slide. This hand comes back. I bring the right hand back. This is my left hand, it's in front. I just shifted my hand here, and then as I step right, left, I bring it to the side. Then from here, just switch to the other side. Bring it up, thrust, slide, step, step, boom. And I'm gonna to try to move back so you can see the feet. My right side is back, this is my right hand. I get it in the left hand, stick it in his throat for self-defense. One, two, slide, Smash. You want to fight like Morgan from The Walking Dead using the walking stick for self-defense. It's the perfect SHTF tool. Again, it might be The Walking Dead. It might be The Undead. It might be zombies. It might just be The Unprepared. It might be The Sheeple coming around because their stomachs hurt so much because they didn't prepare. They didn't set anything aside. Did you know that in Venezuela, since the communists took over, that the, the people have been shrinking every year, they, they lose on average, I think it's been 27 pounds in the last like four or five years, just on average of all the adults. Imagine the poor children, how hungry they must be. Don't let that happen to you. Set some things aside, prepare. I'm not an alarmist, I'm a preparation person, but it's only because I wanna stay in this mindset of abundance. I want you to feel abundant too. Look around you and see, what do you do? You put a little water aside, you put, you teach yourself some vital skills, learn how to forage, learn how to make shelter, learn how to make a fire, learn how to uh, cook food, learn how to hunt food, learn how to fish for it, just basic simple things. It gets you off your phone, gets you away from the screen. Did you know that Netflix says their only competitor is sleep? So if that's you, if you're a Netflix binge watcher, trade all that Netflix time, it's all garbage anyway, trade all that Netflix time for outside time. Go for a walk, go for a hike, look around, see, Take, get your, buy yourself one of those paper field guides for where you live, you, Google it, but you buy a paper field guide and it'll, it'll tell you what you can eat and how to identify it so you don't poison yourself. Don't just start chewing on stuff. There's a reason you don't do that. You have to find out, someone else figured out what you can eat and what you can't. But learn what's edible around you, right? Be an abundant preparer, be an abundant prepper. And in the meantime also, right? Learn how to fight like Morgan from The Walking Dead using the ultimate self-defense prepper tool, which is the walking stick for self-defense. So the backhand, pop it up, thrust, offset step, smash, switch feet, lift, stop their advance, one, two, bam. From here, you can bring it up this way, you can bring it around, you can bring it straight through, you can even spin it, and you can put it in one hand, use it like a Zulu spear. You watch Morgan from The Walking Dead, he's whipping it up here, he's got him here, he's got him here, He's got them all over the place because there's so many in those TV shows. He's got a, he doesn't have any time to think. I don't want you to have time to think, but I want you to think about preparation 
and practice. Don't, when you need it, it should just flow out of you like water, right? So let's review, let's go back to the very beginning. It's in the right hand, the right foot's back. Punch your hand straight out, turn your hand like this. That puts the long side forward. You're gonna hit him in the head. From here, if you want to, bring it back. Bring it over, bring it back. It's just punch the arm, thumb down. Then leading with the thumb, like a rainbow coming back, right? There's a pot of gold at the end of that rainbow. There's not, there's just a, a walker's head. Bam, bring it through here, bring it through here. You need more power, turn your shoulders and hips. You need more power, step off to the side. Step back, step off, step back. Your foot's going right, left, left, right. Second one, get it in the front hand. That's my left foot, left hand forward. My right foot's back. I'm a wide person when I step back. I'm a smaller target. All my vital spots are close to you. When I step back, it's harder to reach them. I'm now behind this hickory quantum self-protector. Joe, first link below if you wanna see the dimensions. Make your own, invest your time before you invest your money. That's the perfect thing for a prepper anyway. Or you don't have the time and you want something that has exceptional quality, beauty and value. Go for the Cane Masters Quantum Protect Yourself Fist Stick. That's the first one below. You're behind it. Point your thumb. Thrust. Point your thumb. Step off the side. Thrust. They grab the tip. Smash. Stick it in them. Bam. Go the other way. From here, make this a good challenge for your brain elasticity. Step right, left. When you go to the right, step left, right. When you go to the left, then switch feet. Same thing. Thrust, turn. Remember, the reason for the turn, someone grabs here and you're turning, it's gonna twist their arms up, it's gonna break their grip, and if you do it right, it's gonna smash them in their head. All at the same time, you need more power, extend the arms, turn your shoulders and hips, and move your body, right? And then the last one, hey, since I am it, it's good to see you, we're fighting with Morgan from The Walking Dead, his self-defense, uh, it's the perfect self-defense training tool for SHTF, I was reading an article because I, I, my Irish father-in-law, we were talking on the Thanksgiving and uh, I said, we got to go. We just got to go to Ireland. We've got to go before something shuts it down again. And he said, no, I think it's, I think it's headed in the right direction. And then here comes Transformer, the Omicron. Omicron's coming. And, and then I saw something that it might, you know. Anyway, let's hope, let's hope it's an overblown overreaction. To what's happening yeah right foot forward right foot back depending on which technique it, it doesn't really depend here's some universal uh footwork or, or we'll call it, let's call it um not footwork not stances let's just call it footing let's talk about basic footing for fighting with the walking stick for self-defense so you can fight like morgan from the walking dead with perfect shtf prepper self-defense tool one foot in front of the other when you, you can either step in or you can step back, but put one foot in front of the other. Never cross your feet. You're not a ballerina. I'm not a ballerina. You're not a ballerina. You might be a ballerina learning how to fight with a stick, like Morgan from The Walking Dead using the ultimate self-defense prepper tool. However, don't cross your feet when you're defending yourself. That's a, pr that's a basic principle. That's a rule. So if the right foot's back, on this technique, when I point the thumb, the left foot's forward. On the last technique, it's in the right hand. But does it matter as long as you defend yourself? It does not. Just don't cross your feet. When you go to the right, when your right foot's back, step right, left. When you go to the left, step left, right. It doesn't matter which foot's back. If you step left, left, right. When you step right, right, left. Just get in this habit of fighting so that you never cross your feet. That's the hard and fast rule. That's the only one. Now. Can you cross your feet in certain styles of martial art? Is there value? Absolutely. Are we doing martial arts? No, we're doing self-defense. There's a little bit of a difference. There's a lot of difference when it comes to this. From here, I bring this up. I thrust to stop his forward attack. Here's his face. Stick it through his throat, stick it in his eyes for self-defense. I'm gonna step one, two. I step off the line so that I have, so that if he hits me, I I'm out of the way, right? I have the advantage. Also, I'm out of his line of sight. I'm also in a better position. I see him square on. He, he only sees me out of one eye now. 
From here, my hand slides to the end. The other hand just pulls it back. I'm gonna turn my shoulders and hips, smashing with as much power as I can generate because Morgan from The Walking Dead, it's a walker. You don't get the guy who's gonna bite you, you turn into a zombie, you're done. So you gotta smash his head open for self-defense in the movie. If, like we said, the zombies and all those shows, that's a metaphor for the unprepared masses, for the sheeple, don't be a sheep. Prepare so you don't have to panic. Prepare so you don't perish later. Prepare so you're not walking around bah, bah, looking for somebody to take care of you. Be your own first responder. Be your own self-protector. Be the sentinel in charge of security for your family. Don't wait. Prepare. Practice. This is what we're doing. So we have this hand uh, back. The right hand's back. The right foot's back. I bring it into the other hand so I have more power, more control, and I stick it through him like a rifle bayonet attack for self-defense. As I'm moving to the side, I'm sliding down, right, left, turning the shoulders and hips, and then I can come through the temple, the neck, the shoulder, the elbow. Remember, joints break easier than the arm, than the, the bones. With this Hickory self pretense or uh, Hickory Quantum Self Defense Stick, the Joe, the first link below, you can break the arm, the femur. You're going to break the leg. You can break the the upper arm. Can't think of what it's called now. You know what it is. From here thrust, step, smash, put it in the other hand. That's my left hand. My left foot goes back. I lift it, thrust, step off the angle, slide, turn your shoulders and hips. And then notice that when I strike, I'm not stopping here on this side of my body. I didn't hit anything. I've got to go through. Make sure you follow through on all your strikes. Your strike should be immediate, direct, and explosive. You should be targeting things you can remove or destroy, like their eyesight, their ability to see, breathe, temporarily, permanently, their ability to hear or think or be awake or have their uh, footing, right? You should be taking away their ability to reach in, to grab you, stab you, punch you, push you, choke you to death, bite you if you're, they're a walker. That's Their goal is to remove that. So you ask yourself, that gives you the question, the answer to the question, what am I going to hit? I'm going to hit him in his head. I'm going to hit his shoulder. I'm going to hit his arm. Ask yourself, what can I remove or destroy for self-defense? And if it's a walker, you only have one choice, right? You got to go for the head. You Maybe you push him back a little bit. And that gives you room from here. And then you go all in. Fight's not over until you win. Follow through. All your strikes have to have follow through. Smash. This is one of my favorite ones. We didn't go over this in the combination. But you can put these together in combination. From here... From here, turn here, let it whip into that back hand. Bring it across here. There's the one we just did. We just did that, but bring it through here in a horizontal strike. Slide to the middle, smash. He grabs it, turn. His hands are gonna go like this, smash on top of his head, lift him up under his chin, bring him up either between his legs, lift him off the ground or up under the chin. And the last thing I wanted to reiterate, which is very important, if they have one of these, it's a razor sharp, that's a SOG. This is a beautiful gift from my beautiful wife for my ugly birthday. <laughs> no, it was a good birthday last year. Look how much longer. I don't care where you put it. I still have a lot of reach. Right, I have so much reach using a stick for self-defense, a walking stick. There we go. And if you have one of these uh, one hand open knives, practice, right? These are made to go and you can change that, put them one side, the other side, you whip it out. Someone asked me last time, what's, what's my everyday carry? I've got a lot of everyday carry stuff. That's just one of them. Anyway, yeah, Hank, you've got some great ideas there with the footwork and the footing. Hank's got great uh, footing advice. Anyway, you guys have been awesome. If I didn't say it already, very grateful for you. Thank you very much. Have a safe and happy holiday weekend. If you're here in the States, we're finishing up on Thanksgiving. It's been a beautiful weather down here. We went for a hike this morning, saw a big, fat, juicy alligator just sitting there watching the fish, right? And I think of things like that, and I think, what, does the what can the alligator teach me? And I think, well, he's got a little lizard brain. He probably couldn't even teach me much. <laughs> I'm, I'm just kidding. No, he's got thick, tough skin, right? He's got, big sh he's got uh, scales on his back. He's got that thick uh, armor, right? The armor, he's got, he's got the powerful jaws. He can move with like lightning speed when he's ready to attack. He's a, an ambush predator. He's waiting. He's always prepared. He's always prepared. He's always waiting. 
those are things that you can practice. You adopt those and you say, you know what? I can toughen up a little bit, not just my physical body, but sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. Learn how to let things roll off your back, let them go. There was a, an incident at the restaurant recently down the street, two guys getting a fender bender and it ends in one of these. And it's like, and that's the end for one of them. The other one will probably spend the next 20, 30 years in jail all over a fender bender. Learn how to toughen up, let things like that go. That's all part of prepping too. But also learn how to not let people get under your skin or push your buttons or control you. You're giving away your power when you do that. That's all part of it, right? Learn how to toughen up, buttercup, physically and emotionally. I learned all that from looking at this alligator. I'm thinking all that stuff. Look at that thick skin. I bet I could go down and take a bite. I couldn't even bite out of that, right? Not me. I don't have any canines. But, you know, unless it's another alligator, he's pretty safe. But, yeah, beautiful nature. Around here, too, Matthew especially. It's just gorgeous. The weather couldn't be any more perfect. You hear the birds. We see we have these. And then last night, we had these three big cranes. They're this tall. And they, they actually they do a mating dance. They call them dancing cranes. It's one of the most amazing things I've ever seen. I never even knew they existed until I moved down here. And you see things like that. And they take off a huge wingspan. You feel the air as they go by. Just so much that we can learn from nature. But if you spend all your time on the internet or the Facebook, you get nothing out of Facebook. Um, you know, I, I'm not trying to tell you how to live your life. But get outside more. Trade some of it. Trade some of the screen time for the outside time. And while you're out there, start taking mental notes. Better yet, take handwritten notes. Make yourself a little field guide. Remember when the little kids do that. They start writing things down. Learn how to do that again. Learn what's in your environment. Learn where you would go to, to protect yourself and your family and what skills, right? Start making lists. What do I need? Not to panic, not to be paranoid, not to be worrier, not to be negative, but to be positive and be proactive and to be a prepared, prepared person so you don't have to panic. And you start saying, what can I do to get a little bit ahead of the feeling of insecurity? Well, I could, uh, I could get a little extra water. I could look at how, you know, what kind of food is in the pantry that we could kind of, you know, get a little bit extra, a little one, two. Do I have enough stuff? If, if the grid went down for two or three weeks, and that's a real possibility. And I'm not saying that out of like an alarmist or alarmism, but those are all projections. They, what's happening right now was projected before. What happened last year, even during the COVID, as crazy as that was, when they first doing the shutdowns and stuff, and I remember saying to people, people saying to me, they'll never shut it down. <laughs> they could never tell you to wear a mask. They could never make you get a jab. They could never make you do this and that. And I said, but they projected that this is going to happen. So don't be surprised when it does. And what's happening is projected. So don't panic. Don't um, live a shortened life or small life. Live a big life. Be abundant, be abundant-minded. There are bigger things than, than all of these governments and all of these bureaucrats. It's just flutter anyway. Learn how to have a bigger, richer, fuller spiritual life and let that roll off your back. But at the same time, be proactive with your health, your fitness, what you put in your mouth and your body, um, what you put in your brain, and what you read and what you see, what you consume. You guys have been awesome. I'll see you in a little bit. Thank you. I have to go find a location. I'm still looking.